And nothing's gonna stop me now No hurdles gonna bring me down Cause I am going I'm going from the crowd I'm going from the yeah. crowd Yeah I'm going from the crowd Oh Foot stomping, hand clapping. Amen. 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 Keep the fire burning. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, choir. And thank you for your director who is who got you singing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We'll try not to be before you long. No. Amen. From the scripture that was read in your hearing, from Daniel chapter 3, mm -hmm. I hear some buzzing in these speakers here, um, from Daniel chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse number 1, skip down to 4 through 7. Amen. Verse number 1 says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits and bread, bread thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the providence of Babylon. Down to verse number four. Then a herald cried aloud, to you it is commanded. O people, nations, and language, that at what time ye hear the sound of the coronet, flute, harp, sackbuts, palsy, dissembles, and all kind of music. Ye, shall, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Verse number seven, therefore at that time when all the people heard the heard the sound of coronets, flutes, harps, sackbuts, pulsary, and all kinds of music. All the people, nation, and the languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, has set up. From those few verses, I want to preach from the subject today, the golden image trap. The golden image trap. Our Father and our God is again, Lord, I stand behind this sacred desk. I ask God that you will lower me down into your storehouse of knowledge. Bring me up with power from high power that makes preaching easy. I ask God that you would anoint me from the crown of my head to the very soles of my feet. Let none of my inadequacies, let none of my hang-ups hinder what you want to do. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. For it is in the name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. Amen. The golden image On February 25th, 2021, at the Conservative Political Action Conference that was held in Florida, otherwise known as CPAC, the crowd was introduced to a golden image of former President Donald Trump. Conventioners flock to the image to take selfies with the golden statue dressed in an American flag. At least one person was photographed kneeling at its feet, giving misguided opposition the idea to quickly Photoshop images of clergy kneeling 
at his feet to pray. And though that photo has been debunked as as fake, for Christians, it's an image that sticks, and for good reason. You see, a golden statue sends all the wrong signals. To the Republican parties, it proclaimed that Trump is worth his weight in gold as a highly respected leader. But to you and I, weary Christians, it is a warning about about idol worship. Am I right about it? Many Many imperfect men have been reversed in history and for good reason. President George Washington, who was a slave slave owner, is reversed for his military power that won the Revolutionary War. Many imperfect men in biblical history have been reversed, amen, and for good reason. Abraham was an adulterer who slept with his handmaid. But he is reversed as the God as God's father of many nations. Moses was a murderer who killed an Egyptian. But he is reversed as one who brought the Hebrew nation out of slavery. And then there's David. David arranged the death of a man so he could have his wife. But David is reversed as a man after God's own heart. For David repented. You see, imperfect men are capable of doing some good. But none of us are so good that we should be worshipped. Am I right about it? Why do you say that, preacher? Well, because there's only one example of perfection, and that is Christ. So, so, so how, how does the construction of a golden image lay a trap, Reverend Holland? Well, though, though there are modern day examples that I can use, I'm going to do a biblical warning in the story of King. King Nebuchadnezzar and his golden image and we're going to take a look at the damage that it caused. First, Nebuchadnezzar's golden image commanded worship. Worshiping, my brothers and sisters, someone uh, can be very, a, a very slippery slope. Hero worship heartfelt admiration and public adoration can get out of control. Have I got a witness here? You see, that's what happened in Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar petitioned at the creation of his own image in gold as a monument to his kingship. And the golden image became a trap to keep, amen, his Jewish captives in obedience. By court order, the king's herald declared, when you hear the sound of the coronet, flute, harp, sackbut, palsy, dissemble, all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image. My brothers and sisters, it was an order a clear and distinct command. From that day forth, it would be the custom to bow before the golden image. It was a version of follow the leader. Now, you remember, amen, the children's game, follow the leader. 
First, they chose a leader. Then all the children were lined up behind the leader. When the leader moved, the children had to mimic what the leader did. So whatever he does, they have to do. And any player who failed to follow the leader was out of the game. But fortunately, my brothers and sisters, follow the leader is not just a childhood game. Have I got a witness here? You see, the command of leaders can become so customary that they become habitual. Mm -hmm. Sometimes all it takes uh, to inspire people to fall in line is a captivating phrase. Like, make America great again. Or the haunting melody of lock her up. All it takes is to be repeated over and over again. And before long, what the leader says, think and does, all the followers do as well. Well, if he is obnoxious, they will become obnoxious. If he is angry, they will become angry. If he is a liar, they will repeat his lies. If he is a bigot, they will become bigot. If he refuses to wear a mask in the pandemic, they will follow him even to their death. Just like in the childhood game. If the leader is cunning, he calls all the shots. But there, my brothers and sisters, is danger in blindly following the leader. Uh huh. You see, blind worship, blind worship requires no thought, no rationale, no validation. Because those who follow are lost, trapped in the game. So they need no proof. They need no evidence. They need no testimony, no confirmation. It's just monkey see, monkey do. Nebuchadnezzar's golden image commanded worship. Amen. We command here that we follow Christ. Everything I say is not gold. I got people that I have to answer to. Nebuchadnezzar set up an image because he didn't have to answer to no one but Nebuchadnezzar. But as a backup, the king used fear to keep his captives in line. It was yet another golden image trap. Whoever did not bow to his golden image would have to face a fiery death. Captive Jews, my brothers and sisters, fear losing their lives. I want to go somewhere else, but the Lord will go. <laughs> now, you see, you see, we got to follow the leader. I said, I want to go somewhere else. All right. All right. I, 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 I want to tell you just how we got where we are. But I'm going to follow Christ. <laughs> Have I got a witness in this building? <laughs> look, 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 look. Nebuchadnezzar had a history of ruthlessness. He was a cunning adversary. I, I know some of y'all know some people like that, amen, who, who tell you just what they want you to hear, and they want you to follow 
whatever they say. And when you don't, they get mad with you. I'm going to say, I'm going to say. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar raided a man, uh, Jerusalem. You see, he was a ruthless man. He was a cunning adversary. In Jeho Jehoiakim's third year as a ruler, Nebuchadnezzar raided Jerusalem. Uh-huh. He looted the holy vessels from the temple and took some of the Jews captive. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. It, but, 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 but what he didn't know, he didn't know that Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, a man, was part of that captive taken to Babylon. So, so Nebuchadnezzar repeatedly crossed the desert and warred against Jehoiakim until Jerusalem finally fell, and his main tactic was fear. Mother, it's hard. You see, fear will put people on the run. Fear will make you fall down and worship man. And, and, and when man stand and say, this is the way it's going to be, and if you don't like it, then you do something different. Well, when his golden image was erected, King Nebuchadnezzar used fear to extract obedience from the Jews. So you see, they were fear of losing their lives. That's what cunning leaders will do. You see, they convince you that you will lose something if you do not obey. It doesn't have to be your life. It can be fear of losing your country, fear of losing your perceived privileged status, or fear of losing your gun. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Ah. Deacon Hall. It wasn't as bad when I was studying. But I'm going to stay with the Lord. <laughs> when a leader convinces you that as long as you follow him, you have nothing to fear, then all fear becomes relative and it demands obedience. I'm going to close now. Finally, The king, golden image, created a cult. All of Babylon bowed to the bully. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar uh, flaunted all of his wealth. Uh, you read it in the scripture, the hanging garden. And now the great wall city, the kingdom uh, originally gave, given to Adam, and now he convinced the captives that uh, uh, his wealth was theirs too. Uh, if they would only obey and worship him. You see, his message was, uh, worship me and I. Uh, don't ask questions because I know everything. I'll do all the thinking for you. Uh, 
All you got to do is follow me. Now, and now uh, they bought it hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, you see, uh, the captive Jews um, broke the first commandment in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3. That said, thou shalt have no other God before me. The captive Jews um, disobeyed the Mosaic law in Leviticus 19 and 4. That said, turn ye not unto idols, nor make your, to yourself molten gods. For I am the Lord your God. The captive Jews uh, forgot the warning of the psalmist uh, that said in Psalm 96 and 5, uh, all the gods of the mouth of the nation uh, are idle, uh, but the Lord uh, made heaven and earth. You see, Nebuchadnezzar uh, successfully uh, created a cult-like obedience. Now, his devious psychological technique now, held the captives in a mindless game of manipulation. But uh, the golden image trap now, can and do fail. Now, thankfully, uh, in Babylon, uh, there were Three Hebrew boys uh, who did not fear uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, you see, these boys, uh, they knew that God will. Uh, and yes, he will. Uh, not that he could, uh, but God will. Uh, yes, he will. Uh, he will deliver. Nebuchadnezzar witnessed the failure uh, attempt of the execution. The Bible says that he was astonished. Uh, and not only did he look in and see three human boys in the fiery furnace, uh, but he also saw a fourth. Uh, the Bible says uh, that Nebuchadnezzar uh, he said, the form of the form uh, is like the Son of God. Uh, and when he called the boys out of the flame, uh, the Bible said, uh, not a hair uh, on their head was sin. Uh, I don't know uh, about you, uh, but when I'm in the furnace, uh, when I'm in the furnace, uh, I know the Lord. Will come and get me uh, when I'm in the furnace. When I'm in the furnace, uh, God will, uh, He will deliver. Uh, when I'm sick, uh, He makes me well. Uh, when I'm broke, uh, He fills my pocket. Uh, when I need rest, uh, He provides them for me. Uh, I'm so 